It is the age of fake news, they say, and foreign interference. After all that mounting evidence of Russian meddling in the elections in the United States and in France, new warnings from the U.S. intelligence chiefs this past week, the Canadian government is taking steps to protect Canadians against outside threats in the upcoming federal election. They've got now a team of five people, including the Prime Minister's National Security Advisor, who will be responsible for alerting the public about any suspected misinformation being spread online. But there's also no new money for security agencies, so does this new plan have any teeth? Meantime, the United States has called China the biggest espionage threat facing the West, so why has Canada still not banned the Chinese telecom company Huawei from taking part in Canada's 5G next generation wireless? Let's find out. Joining me now is the Public Safety Minister, Ralph Goodell. Uh, Minister Goodell, great to have you on the program. What exactly, concretely, is your government doing to stop foreign interference in the next election? Well, being um, uh, forewarned is one of the best ways to be prepared. So obviously we have watched very carefully what happened in the United States, what happened in the Brexit referendum, what happened in France and Germany and other places around the world. We've gone to school on that to try to uh, recognize the telltale uh, uh, symptoms of uh, of, uh, foreign interference. Uh, Our security agencies, uh, that is the communication security establishment, Uh, in the Department of National Defense, Uh, CSIS, our human intelligence uh, agency, as well as uh, the uh, the Department of Global Affairs and the the RCMP are all very alert. They they have come together in a task force. Uh, The RCMP has a particular investigative unit set up to to deal with this kind of activity. Uh, And they will be very alert, as they already are, in uh, identifying the signs. And then the critical thing, uh, Evan, is letting Canadians know. Okay, but but if it's such a, a fundamental threat, and we have ample evidence of that, when I looked at your announcement, you had three ministers out there. You've put a grand total of $7 million forward for what you call digital news and civic literacy programming. Is there any new money? I'm talking about new money for a new threat that security agents can take, use to take on this threat. I'm talking about new money. How much new money do they have? We are working on the, on the uh, financial platforms for all of these agencies to deal with foreign interference, but also to deal with the other uh, security risks and problems and challenges that they need to deal with. Uh, I think you've probably heard me say that uh, uh, we've been providing program uh, integrity funding to the agencies to make up for the cutbacks that occurred in previous years under a previous government. Uh, The review process in terms of their financial strength is now just about complete and we will be making sure that they have the financial resources to do this okay, job, so, okay, so it's which just is answer me protecting straight, against foreign interference, but everything else too. Okay, so just answer me straight. It's a new threat. Is there any new money? Yes or no? Uh, it, it, there will be new money for these agencies going forward to do their total job. How they much? They will decide internally. Uh, uh, like I would, yes, I want to. We just want that process is ongoing. But, uh, that look, I have. I will make it very clear that they will have the resources they need in order to do all of the jobs that we ask them to do. It's not just a case of dealing with one threat. They are responsible for protecting Canadians against every form of threat, and we will make sure that they've got the finances to do the job. The $7 million is a grant to to private sector NGOs who are experts in, in informing the public about specific uh, elements of, uh, of uh, digital hygiene and recognizing fake news when it happens. Citizens need to be informed as well, oh, oh, but the agencies will have the money. Minister, uh, why is the chief electoral officer not part of your new protocol panel? If elections, if elections are under attack and the agencies are already there to stop any attack, why wouldn't you put the chief electoral officer as part of this panel to make sure the election has integrity? Well, the, the, the chief electoral officer and the elections commissioner, who is actually the official that deals with offenses under the Elections Act, uh, they will obviously be, uh, be fully uh, informed. But it's very important to maintain the distinction between the two roles. There needs to be seamless communication so that, so that uh, they are fully informed. But their job is to make sure that the Canada Elections Act is properly applied and that anything that that uh, breaks the law 
is, uh, is properly identified and, and prosecuted. The, uh, the issue of foreign interference uh, falls within the jurisdiction of the, of the security and police agencies, uh, and they need to do right. their job in, uh, in uh, making sure that there's not untoward uh, corruption of Canadian elections that comes from right. a foreign capital. All right, let's move on to China, also a big threat. The U.S. has brought serious charges against Huawei, the Chinese telecom company, essentially calling them an arm of the Chinese state. When will Canada decide if it will ban Huawei from participating in building the next generation of wireless here, the 5G network? Uh, Evan, that process has, uh, has started the examination of 5G. Understand that it's not an examination of a specific company or a specific country. Uh, it's an examination of this new technology that is different from, from 4G. The issues before us are really twofold. Number one, uh, what, is, what is this new technology that is different from what we've known before so we can understand not just the potential of what it can do, but also its new potential vulnerabilities? Uh, and then secondly, uh, how do we make sure that when Canadians have access to the technology, they can do it in a safe and secure right. manner. That, that examination started some months ago. It's got some ways to go yet before we're, we're satisfied, but we will make a decision that will be in Canada's best interest and we will not, repeat not, undermine Canadian security. Okay, well, let, let me, I'm gonna read you something off the CSIS website. Okay, this is the Canadian Security Agency published a report and it's called uh, Fingers in All the Pots, the Threat of Foreign Interference in Democratic Systems. And it talks about New Zealand and it, this is CSIS on their website. S New Zealand provides a vivid case study, it writes, of China's willingness to use economic ties to interfere with the political life of a partner company. They write, it's an aggressive strategy, has sought to influence political decision making, pursue unfair advantages in trade and business, suppress criticism of China, facilitate espionage uh, opportunities and influence overseas Chinese communities. The warning is so stark here. I'm just trying to ask you, do you believe, one, that Huawei is an instrument of the Chinese state? Do you believe they can be used as an instrument of the Chinese state? And do you believe that China is, like they are clearly doing in New Zealand, uh, targeting Canadians? Uh, CSIS and the RCMP and the communications security establishment and all of the police and security agencies of the government of Canada are alert to all manner of threats. And all of that, Evan, is going to be taken into account, is now being taken very carefully into account in the Canadian decision-making process. But understand, again, we are not in this, in this examination that's ongoing. It's not about a specific company or a specific country. It's about all of them and the entire supply chain and all of the potential participants right. in that supply but chain. This is about, whether but, but it be the US... one company or two companies from, from China or Ericsson or Nokia or any but, other company, but to be we fair, have sir. to examine it all. But to be fair, it's Don't about Huawei. It. It's, about, you, it's about the U.S. You, and our Five Eyes partners outside of Britain, and they're on the fence, are saying no to Huawei and 5G. CSIS says China's a target. I'm asking you a specific question. Do you believe that Huawei can be used as an instrument of state and of espionage for the Chinese government, as the U.S. has alleged, yes or no? We will absolutely weigh all of the scientific evidence all of the safety and security evidence. And Evan, you do a grave disservice to the, to the protection of the Canadian state when you try to, to fragment the, the investigative process. It is important that this process have continuity, comprehensiveness, and integrity. There's an urgency because Canadians are in prison and that's why we're trying to get a decision on Huawei and it raises the question are you delaying the decision about Huawei and the 5G because of the jailed Canadians? No, no. The, uh, the, the, the decisions with respect to 5G and all of the potential participants, the nature of the new technology, its advantages and its vulnerabilities, and the participants in the supply chain, that is a process uh, that has uh, complete integrity uh, and, and will be conducted on the basis of, of hard facts and science, and we will not compromise national security. Minister Goodell, great to have you on the program. That's all the time I have. I appreciate it very much. Good to talk to you. All right, that's Minister Ralph Goodell.